I'm just going to give Darren his first chance to pick any subject, and I'm just guessing it might be about something or other. But what, Darren, where would you start from all the papers? OK, well, I'm going to go for Brexit. OK. Uh, Kel Surprise. Now, um, page eight of The Times here, it says, Tory rebels join bid to soften EU bill in Lords. Now, of course, you've just had patience on there, and... Uh, she gave a, you know, rousing speech to um, re rebel against... We'll the do, we'll do the yeah. paper, So, it, in this paper here, it says, the government have abandoned the idea of being members of the single market and the customs union. Now, that was clear to me throughout the referendum campaign. We abandoned that when we voted leave on June 23rd. I think these people are trying to subvert the will of the people. And does the paper name the Tory rebels? It, it, it names Lord Paddy Ashdown, Menzies Campbell, you know, the Lib Dem typical suspects. Um, it, but Lord Paddy Ashdown gave a speech, you know, I defy anyone to go against the, the will of the British people once they have spoken. That was the day after the referendum. All of a sudden, changed his tune. Um, now, Jenny Jones, you're a um, lever, but you've told us privately this morning, and, uh, and you've, you've said you might repeat this now, you're swithering on how to vote in the Lords. It's very difficult for me because I'm a passionate lever. I, I believe very strongly we will be better out of the EU. But I'm very, very distressed by the way that the government is handling all this. And in the white paper, for example, that they've drawn up beforehand, they have not given a debate to the environment. Now, when you understand that climate change is probably the biggest disaster facing us um, in the next decade then and, and forever, then uh, it's utterly irresponsible for but the you, government you, so to... You're a lever who might vote not to trigger Article 50. With huge, huge distress, I, yes. I think what I would say to, to Baroness Jones, who I think was very principled in coming out against her party for to come out for leave, but I think, actually, Brexit gives us an unreal opportunity to debate those issues like the environment. OK, let me do, do that with Heather McGregor then. What do you make of uh, Darren's drawing strands together? Jenny's just, I think, made the news there with what she said. But Heather, what do you, what was your entry to the debate? Uh, well, um, I would, I really do hope Jenny does change her mind and, and vote um, against triggering Article 50 because I'm a bit worried about who's going to pick all the iceberg lettuces in the UK that we're now going to try and buy in the UK um, as a result of... And I, by the way, I absolutely agree with food miles. You know, it would be much better for everybody if we all bought stuff grown locally. But frankly, once we come out of the EU, I don't know who's going to be around to pick them. And what about this story that the big Darren began with? Is it appropriate for Conservative Party members who are MPs to join the bid to soften EU, the EU bill? And even in the Lords, is that something that they should happen, Heather? Well, I understand that this is something which is whipped, which means that if you go against the party line, you will have to resign the party whip. Um, and, you know, there are plenty of things for which we're given free votes. The government the, gave a free um, position to everybody who wanted it. In fact, and so did the... Um, opposition in the referendum and I think people think this is carrying on actually what needs to happen now is strong government even those of us like me who wanted to remain what we want now is an orderly process the government and peers in the House of Lords all had the opportunity to vote on this that that was during the referendum the people voted to leave and they should respect that there are two big issues for the, for the Lords, for the House of Lords. The first is, of course, it's the will of the people. The referendum um, gave us a result. But the second thing is that the Lords does not want to uh, stand up against the Commons on an issue as big as this. OK, thank, thank you very much. Heather, I, I'm going to move along. I, want, I did mm. earlier promise that you'd talk to us about Spitfire Mary, and then I'll come back to you, Jenny, on your big oil story. Now, Mary appeared on BH uh, a month or two ago, so can you tell us what the Sunday Times is reporting about her? Give her her full name. Uh, yes, so the Sunday Times is reporting, and this is on page 15 of the main section of the Sunday Times, Mary Ellis, who is now 100, um, is reporting on her flying the Spitfire that many, many years ago she delivered during the war, the very same Spitfire, that she was given the opportunity to be reunited with. Um, and in fact, there's a fabulous picture um, on uh, page 15 of two Spitfires flying together, one of which has Mary in it, um, it, in the last six months. And you rarely see two Spitfires together. Now, as somebody who has a private pilot's licence um, and is 54, I really hope that I'm still able to go up in an aeroplane at at 99 and i i have uh, linked this very much to an article in the well, before you no. get to your next article let me just ask jenny and darren about spitfire mary she was an atta girl you've both been reading the story here yes uh, uh, well i'm all for the rise of the older woman and of course it's a play on words having her flying and rising. <laughs> no it's absolutely brilliant 
It's no, what? it's quite something, actually. Yeah, I, I was quite blown away by it. It's a fascinating story. I didn't know that women flew Spitfires, so that's... Yeah, I but, didn't think they were allowed to. No, in that... the war, in the war, women actually they, they weren't allowed to fly in combat. Right. Oh no, they um, flew them between. They, they flew them between airfields okay. and they yeah, delivered them from that. factories. And yes. I have sat in the cockpit of a Spitfire. It is really frightening. You cannot see anything. There is very little visibility. Quite imagine, yeah. When I compare that now to you know all glass cockpits and on screen computers, I mean they literally could barely see anything. So it's a very very brave thing to have done. Um, uh, Mary was on our program and told us that she delivered a Lancaster bomber from the factory and when it got to the airfield, three RAF aircrew asked her where the pilot was and when she said it was her, they got in to have a look because they thought there must be someone in there who was actually <laughs> flown it. Uh, now, Jenny, I rudely interrupted you. You have a story for us about peak oil. Well, this is music to my ears. As I said, it's in the Sunday Telegraph on pay business section page two and it's about the fact that we are going to experience a big drop in the price of oil in the sense that people aren't going to use it anymore. It actually says in here... The now exponential growth of renewables threatens to challenge the established orthodoxy. Uh, BP admits in its analysis that quite a bit of today's known reserves will end up never extracted. Music to the ears of the Green Lobby. That means if you're investing in fossil fuels, get out fast and invest in renewables. You heard it here from Jenny Jones of the Green uh -huh. Party. Now, we'll move on, I think. Darren, where next? Well, I think um, this story about the lobbyist attack on the Green Belt. Now, I think that it says here, property industry lobbyists have been accused of using think tanks, charities and even MPs as front operations. No, this is because we're incredibly desperate and my generation, Generation Rent and the generation after mine, are desperate. You know, we need housing to be built now. It's not, you know, some right-wing attack on the Green Belt. It's about building on just 0.5% of the Green Belt, which would build adequate housing for my generation. I, mean, I think... I was about to say, I think that's also linked very heavily to the whole debate about the generation rent, that renting has not been a central policy of, of the Conservative Party for many years. And it has m meant, I feel, that people renting almost these days are ashamed of renting, that they should feel that they should buy their own house. No, quite. But but I, I think on a, on a personal note, if you don't mind if I indulge, I, my, my mother said to me, you know, Darren, the proudest thing I ever did was be, be able to buy my council home because she had the pride of seeing that she'd worked for something and she'd owned something. So I think that to lose that, that sense of ownership in your housing would be incredibly sad. So I don't actually support a complete um, turn away from renting, uh, uh, owning rather. I think that we have to build more affordable housing and we definitely have to build more council houses for rent. It's absolutely appalling that the poorest in society struggles to find somewhere to live. And I'll end this with just a, a briefing from The Observer for all of us. Tories break with Thatcher Homes policy to back renters, says the front page. A major shift in Tory housing policy in favour of people who rent mm. will be announced by ministers this week. That says The Observer. Now, Heather, I rudely interrupted you. Uh, where were you going to move on to? Oh, well, I was going to move to the um, the Sunday Telegraph's um, magazine, Stella. But the final word on the hat on renting is before we start worrying about building on green belts or otherwise, there are 610,000 empty houses in the United Kingdom. Okay. Yeah. And also, the, the first for anybody listening to this, seven and a half thousand pounds of rental income you receive on renting out rooms in your house is free of tax. Please use it. Okay. And there's land banking by developers, which I think is, is yeah. very extremely bad. So the Sunday Telegraph, though, um, in their, uh, they have an article in here about um, oh, the rise of the older woman. Um, and Jenny, I hope you don't mind me sharing that, as I've shared, I'm 54, you're 67. We are both very active. I think it's very important to be active um, la later on in life. We've got so much to contribute. And this is a, f a fabulous piece about women who have gone into modelling at a late age. It's on page 32 called New Model Army. And I'm particularly impressed by a lady called Frances Dunscombe, who uh, started modelling at the age of 82. Huh, mm. Well, I'm not fit to model, but I'll play my part as an older woman. Why not? In politics. Well, that's very important, but that is, you, you're a role model in that thank case. You, thank um, you. Well, look, we thank you all. You've done a brilliant job. So much uh, passion, so much to talk about in the papers this morning. Thank you so much, Darren. Everyone's saying their age this morning. Darren is 23. <laughs> uh, Jenny, I forgot. And Heather, I've also forgotten. But we thank you very much for coming. <laughs>